in a van down by the river. Oh, hi, it must be Friday. Happy Festival Friday, everybody. We are here in Lebanon, Indiana, and we are doing Festool Live. We took last week off. We needed a vacation, but guess what? Next week, well, let me just take a step back. Last week, you probably saw the first nine episodes in a little vignette we posted called The Best Of. Next week, we're doing another one because some of us in this room are going on vacation, but we're still social distancing. <laughs> okay, so after that, next week's best of, we are going to have a really nice run. We have a Festool Lives plan. None of us are going on vacation for quite some time, so we're really excited, and boy, do we have a lot of great stuff planned. Okay, good. So... Next thing I want to do is, like I, we always do, is I want to call out the crew here in the room and online. Okay, so right over here, we have Big D. All right. Over here on the whiteboard today, we have our Midwest sales manager, Brian Knudsen. Beautiful. Behind the camera, we have Chris Seibert. He's our master of disaster. Okay, online, we have Brent. Shively, he's one of our trainers, and he's answering all your questions that come up really quick. Hopefully, I see you on there too, Jason, from Bent's Woodworking. I always call you out. You've been with us since episode one. This is episode 19, and when I was writing this up the other day, I can't believe how many of these we've done so far. And it's going to continue because everybody has said to us, thank you. So we want to thank you for watching. Okay, you got to do me a favor. You gotta, if you are watching on YouTube, which you are, look down and hit subscribe. That way there you get a notification bell to remind you to watch live on Friday at noon. But also, we also post right away on Instagram and Facebook. You'll also, these live on uh, YouTube, so you'll be able to go back and use them ever as a refresher. Okay, good. Now comes the topic and the demo and the training for the day, because this is going to be a fun one. I've been dying to do this one. I got a phone call yesterday by our sales manager, Bill Victory, and he went, hey, Sedge, I have this person down in Charlotte, North Carolina. She just bought a Contoro. Hi, Katie from Fine Grit. This one's for you. She just bought a Contoro, and she has a couple of questions on it. So what I'm going to do today, and I, what I told Bill, I said, have her tune in to Festool Live because that's exactly what I'm doing. <clears throat> when you get a Contoro, okay, and you get one, I want to I wanna make, I love teaching people how to use this because I have a couple of finesse things that are easy to do. I did edge banding in my cabinet shop in Fort Lauderdale day in, day out, and this machine is the cat's pajamas. One thing I'll coach you on. Okay, is when you get the Contoro, let's go over here, Chris, so we can see it. This is the Contoro. Okay, it's our portable edge bander. Okay, the one thing I'm going to tell you, follow me over this way, Chris, is this is the accessory kit. The Contoro is the applicator. You also have to do a several things. And in the accessory kit, it's an all in one kit because you're going to want to get probably most of these anyhow, and we put it together as a set. Okay? Just a little coaching there if you're looking to get one. Now, here's the kicker on this. You still have to clip it, and you still have to pre-cut it, and you still have to trim it. Okay? Of course, I'm going to show you how do you do that with the MFK 700. This is not about the MFK 700 today. I will show you a few basic setup tips for it, but we are planning each router for this fall, okay, to do a full Festool Live on each router and show you the basic setups of each one. So in saying that, boy, that MFK 700 will be a long Festool Live. Okay, now, next on that I have to cover with you on this <coughs> is th some of the things that you can understand about edge banding. This uses anybody's edge banding. Okay, whether it's wood or PVC. Now, here's the one thing I saw when we released this in uh, 2013 here in North America. There was some confusion over this. What kind of banding 
So let, let me just do this. See this? This is pre-finished maple banding, okay? Or tape, as I call it. There's no glue on the back here. The Contoro applies the glue. This is 0.5 millimeter, half a millimeter in thickness. This, uh, and this is wood banding, everybody. This is the thickness, and this is one millimeter. That's all this machine has tolerances for, okay? When it comes to PVC, okay, this will work with 0.5 millimeter in thickness all the way to three millimeter. And today we're going to apply some two millimeter uh, PVC banding. The one thing you got to, and this is the coolest thing about this uh, machine, you can do straight runs, of course, but you can also do inside radiuses. You can do outside radiuses. You can do inside corners. And we've built everything with the machine, the applicator, the Contoro, and in this kit. Okay, so as we go through this, I'm gonna, I have stuff set over here that, I've already, that come in this kit, and I'll call it out what comes with. Let's just keep it simple. Okay, now, when we talk about, I'm going back to tape now. When we talked about the thickness, let's talk about the height. The height, like this is 20 millimeters high. I'm gonna, I mean, I'm sorry, 22 millimeters high in height. I'm going to put this on 20 millimeter plywood, which is roughly three quarter or 19 millimeter. Okay, seven eighths. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when you purchase edge banding, don't purchase really tall banding like this to put it on three quarter. Kind of get it where you need it. So if you're getting three quarter, get 20 millimeter. Use an 18, get 20 millimeter. Because the height range on this goes from 20 millimeter all the way to 65 millimeter tall. I think an Imperial, that's two and three eighths if I remember. So this machine is extremely versatile. Okay, good. I'm glad we clarified the dimensions right away and tolerances for this. Okay. Now, in sh demonstrating this tool over the years, I have learned so much. Okay. See this button here? This is the go button. Or the, oh, I'm sorry, the stat button. When you turn this on, I'm going to press it. Just don't go like that. It doesn't come on. You've got to press it and wait for the beep. Now, you're going to come up here, and this is our first tool that we have a DRO or digital readout. You'll see how it's in red. You never, ever mess with anything on this machine until that turns to green. Okay, so some of the big questions I always get when we're do demo this, demoing this at big trade shows is, how long does it take to heat up? Eight minutes. What's the cleanup time? There is none. You just hit it like this. You can put it either into cool down mode or just get out of there mode. But I always put it in cool down mode. It prolongs the life of the motor. Okay? You'll, you kind of want things to come down. It's fan assisted cool down. Follow. Never touch the digital readout until it turns green. That's why. I have two Contoros. Come on over here, Chris. Now, <coughs> there's a trigger here. There's two speeds, fast and slow. And actually, fast is pretty slow. But the reason you use slow is if, well, watch, I'll show you around here. Come on. See this radius right here? OK. I'll go fast here, and because it's on the trigger, I'll slow down to do the radius and then speed up again. That's why it's on the trigger. The confusing part of this machine is the trigger, because everybody thinks that's the go button. It's not. That's the go button right there. And you'll understand as I go through this what I mean by that. Now, let's look at the, <coughs> let's look at the digital readout. Okay. See the arrows? Watch. I'll cycle through. That's slow, and that's fast. Okay, you have the amount of glue in this little scale. You have temperature range. You can set it at Celsius or Fahrenheit. And right here, with the amount of glue in here, I have 69 feet because this morning I set it for three quarter or 20 millimeter tape. <coughs> okay, so let's talk about glue. Remember, I just said you can use anybody's edge banding? You can. But the glue you have to use, Festool, because we have these specially made so they, oh, so they seat together. Perfect here. Because when the glue goes into the chamber, there's no marks. 
follow? There's no cut marks that that can weep up in and seize up the machine. We have four glue offerings. We have natural, dark brown, white, and black. Okay, so you can, you can really, actually, this one's pretty popular uh, up in Canada. Anybody here play hockey? Never mind. Okay, <laughs> wait for it, wait for it. Okay. <coughs> so if we look at the glue, this is why there's no mess. To change the glue, you see this green button? You hit it like that, and what happens is it opens up, and you just put a new puck in. You can change glue. Inside this pot, there's usually about three pucks in there. So if I need to change a glue color, and we did a video on that one already. You just take this out, if you can get this out, and then you get a cycle about three pucks through. Sometimes it's four, and you just drop it in. Watch. You close it, and it automatically pressurizes there. Okay, and that's how you get started. It's pretty easy. And then it'll come up on a digital readout, and I'm going to cycle through that so we can see this. Stay right here with me, Chris. Okay, so you see this button right here? It says mode. How does that look in D? Good? Okay, good. See how I hit mode? Okay, whatever's blinking, that's what I changed. So I have two arrows. Okay, now I can add more glue. There's, there, there it is in the middle. Okay, if I have a really porous material... I can add a little more glue, or it depends, you know, on what I'm applying. I'm going to do plywood. I usually do it one or two clicks before, and I hit OK. If I didn't hit OK, it would default back to the original setting. So I'm going to hit mode again. Let's see what's blinking. Oh, look, temperature range. Okay, so it's 375. If I want to go a little bit lower, I can to 370. Okay, now when you're using the, the really thin PVC uh, banding, I wouldn't start at 375. I'd go down and I started, I usually do it at 355 because you'll bubble the tape. But you see how it went back to default range? Now, I'll hit it again. Let's look what's blinking. Fahrenheit. Okay, Fahrenheit, what do I want? Celsius? No. Okay, I can go to Celsius or whatever. Or Fahrenheit. I'm going to go keep it at Fahrenheit. And then mode, I'm going to hit one more time. You're going to see feet or meters. And that's how much I have left in there to go. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go back to feet and hit OK, and I'm ready to go. That's my gas tank right there. Cool. Okay. So enough talking. Let's go and uh, I'll show you a few finesse tricks on how to set this up, and we'll run a. We'll do a straight run first. Let me get a board here. Okay, and I'm just gonna put it on my Vaxis I have set up. Okay, and I'm gonna go from this point to this point with the machine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use some I'm going to use that 1 millimeter maple banding. I'm just going to grab it here. And I'm going to do this. I'm just going to take it and I'm going to break it rough. Okay? Now off the roll. This is how I have coached people into using the contouro. Okay? I call it 4 3 2 Well, actually I usually do 2. Okay? You'll understand in a minute. Say that is still on the roll. See how I do three fingers forward and three fingers? When I first started this, I was going four and four to pre-cut, okay? I'm basically down to two and two, and I'll just snap it back like this. You don't have to cut it perfect, okay? So over here, Chris, I'm going to take the contouro, and you see this knob right here? See how it's moving up and down? Okay. I'm going to take my banding. I'm going to do this so you guys can see it. I usually do it the other way. But you see how I'm bringing it up? Okay, see how it's tight? You back it away one click. Bring it up like this tight and just back it away. Okay? Now, I'm going to take that. Chris, I'm going to have you go around here for a better view. Okay? I have it set. Back off. And you see this button right here? That's the go button. I'm going to hit it. And you're going to see where it just grabbed it. Okay, it's pretty simple. Now, Chris, I'm going to switch positions with you. I'm sorry, but I just, oh, the other thing I'll show you is, look, this is all the waste, and that's the cleanup. That's the stuff that just dries in the silicone cup. It slides right in here like this. Okay, it's that simple. Now, <coughs> see this? This is where I'm going to apply the banding. You're going to see it come out here. See, this is the feed roller. Oh, this is another important point to make sure you understand. The feed roller, you know what I told you? It goes at two speeds. 
So you know you've done tape maybe with an iron with pre-glued or sprayed it with contact cement and you put it on there like that, right? What do you do? You gotta burnish it in. The feed roller is also the burnisher. You'll see this in a couple of seconds. <coughs> You have to practice with this a little. And the, when I first started using this, when I got trained on this, I was taking it like a router and I was pulling it or pushing it. No, the, it, it goes at its own speed, okay? But as I put pressure, I don't have to kill it. As I put pressure, that burnisher is feed rolling, is spinning, but it's also putting pressure on there so you get a perfect spread of glue, okay? So here we go, look. <coughs> See this? This is basically an eyeball. This is the center where the banding's gonna come out. You do not put the feed roller here. You bring it out about an inch, and you hit the go button again. See this, Chris, right here, look. There you go. Now you're gonna start to see it feed out, watch. And then I just put pressure, okay? See this? That's the fast mode. And as I go with this, you're just gonna see I'm not killing it, I don't have to watch it. The machine is doing all the work. And the other thing is you notice I came off in the same plane. Okay? This glue is EVA, ethylene vinyl acetate. Okay? It's the same glue that they use in the big machines. Okay? But I always point this out. And I said it already. There's no cleanup. There's no downtime with this. I could just hit this and walk away. Okay? But think about a big edge banding machine. Is it faster? Yeah, but it, they could be the size of this wall, all right? This is all the space it takes up. It comes in just a regular CIS-4, right? Yeah, CIS-4 sustainer. Okay, so think about that. Think about your shop space. If you're considering one of these for a shop, or think about it adding onto a larger edge bander that does inside and outside radiuses. You're talking about a huge amount of money, and how often do you do those? Okay, so let's look at this. See how the... It's applied in lines. Hopefully we can get that with the camera. Let's flip it around here. See how? So when I put that feed roller on there, that spreads those glue lines. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take it like this, I'm gonna spin it, and inside that kit comes this clipper. All right, it's a guillotine. And you're gonna notice right here, this blade here is the one that moves. Oh no, I'm sorry. This is, your, this is the blade that moves. So what I need to do is take this and push it up against the banding. So when I do this, I just slide it in like this. I put pressure here, all right, and I pull it. Look, feel that. Oh, you can't. <laughs> I can't believe I just said feel that. But look, look, that's a perfect edge right there, okay? And I'm going to flip it over like this. I'm going to take it like this, and I'm going to do the other side. There you go, and I'm clipped. And that's perfectly flush. Easy enough? Okay, good. Now I'm going to set this aside because I'll talk about trimming in a minute. I want to get my material up and before. Okay, now let's do a radius. Okay, I made these yesterday. Okay, and I'll do this tighter radius. This is two different radiuses, but I'll do this one. All right, and I'm going to do that with PVC. Okay, so let me just get it on my Vaxis so I have the ability to run this. And I'm gonna do, and I grab this. This is, this is two millimeter. This is old banding, it's a little brittle, but I'll still, I'll make it work. And I'm gonna grab it like this, and I'm gonna grab it like this and give myself a little leeway. And when I call this crack and banding, it, it, you know this pros out there, you just score it on the back if you're pre-cutting and snap it. You don't have to get any fancy clippers or anything like that. All right. All right. So let's do this. Let's bring it back in. Let's go through the process. Sorry, Chris. I'm going to bring it in like this. I'm going to bring it up like this. And listen, one click away, and then I'm going to hit my go button to get it to feed in. It's that simple. And let's do a radius right here. Look. Hit the go button again. Pretty simple, let it come out and just pressurize like this. Do not pull it, okay? And see how it wraps right around the corner? Just like this, and come off in the same plane. <laughs> how easy can that get? And that's almost, just be very careful, don't touch the glue, give it a little bit of time. But you'll see that's a perfect edge on there, okay? And I think this is a better shot right here. I'm gonna actually look at the monitor. Yeah, you could probably see it, look at that. See those lines? 
And when you put pressure on there, like this with that feed roller, you'll get perfect with that. Now I'm just going to clip it. I'm going to bring it out here so I can clip it. And yes, the clipper works for the PVC as well. I'm just going to take it like this, get it on there, clip it. Whoopsie. I'm kind of, there we go. There we go. Whoops. I'm just going to take it. I'm going to actually do it like this today. And I've done this this way horizontally. But if we check it out, you'll see it. With, and look at that. Perfect. Got it? Good. Okay. So now we got to trim it. Oh, boy. MFK 700. Here we go. There's two different ways to look at the MFK 700 to trim this. It's our small router. You can get it in the set. We've had this for since 2000, I think, 8, okay, or 2009. We've always uh, had that in North America. Uh, it comes with a vertical base and a 1.5 degree. And we've always shown people how it works with edge banding. Okay, but there's going to be a point where I'm trimming this edge banding here. And the one all beat all router for that is the EB. And the EB comes with this base, okay? It doesn't come with a horizontal base. It comes with this spring-loaded bearing holder. And when I say that, if you've ever trimmed edge banding, okay, uh, especially PVC, okay, for me, all right? And when you trim that, when you do that, and you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to just clean up this trim ever so slightly, okay, so I have a good starting point, okay? When you trim this banding, I don't, I don't want to do set up two routers. I want to trim it flush, and I want to put a radius on it, okay? But I'm going to be spinning this bit, and we all know when these bits get gummed up, and I'm going to show you right here, when these bits get gummed up, when I hit this bearing on that front edge, I st that'll be spinning at 22,000 RPM, and guess what? That'll mar that front edge. So what this does, is, and you'll see this. I'm going to loosen this here. Okay? See this? It's, it's spring-loaded. I'm going to take it. I'm going to put it in here, and I'm going to set it to the bearing right here. And so what happens is just the bit spinning. So when I put that on there, it doesn't mar it. Okay? And I can trim banding all day long. Let's just... Enough talking. Now, this is two millimeter. I'm using a two millimeter radius bit. And you'll notice these carbides can be flipped to four sharpenings. So that's a really good value. Actually, the, the radius is actually called right out on the bit. The big R is the radius. And this one I have in my hand is radius number one. OK. So next, let's hook this up. All right. Okay, remember, I always tell everybody in router classes, before you put a plug-it cord on, you always make sure that that router is cycled off. Okay, now we're ready to go. And I'm just going to take that. And that base is in the vertical. Okay, pretty slick. Now. Hopefully, Chris, you can come in here and see this. You may have a little glue left over. Okay, you see that? Now, check this out. See this? This is our carbide scraper. It comes with our um, accessory kit. And the way you use this, look, I'm going to take it and see how I have it at a skewed angle right here? Look, my finger's right here. I'm holding it underneath, and I'm just pushing it forward, and that cleans up that edge. Wicked nice. Okay, and a typical, when I'm up using edge banding, I'm always using my fingernail to do that. And I can just come around here and clean up that edge. And that, to me, my friends, is perfect. Okay, so there you go. That's just some simple basics on how to trim that radius. And this is two millimeter PVC. Okay, so I have that. Now, that router with this base comes in a sustainer and it's called <clears throat> if I hopefully I get this right it's called the MFK 700 EQ slash B okay that's the one I recommend for the Contoro 
But we've always had, and I've been teaching people how to trim banding at a one and a half degree for a long time here at Festool. And this base comes in the set. Okay? And this bearing follows the front edge. Okay? And that allows you to trim this bearing when you set it at a perfect one and a half degree. Okay? And when I'm, when I'm personally, when I'm trimming 0.5 millimeter edge banding and I'm building cabinetry, frameless cabinetry, I use the horizontal base. Let's hook it up. I'll show you how to use it. And like I said, we'll do a, a Fest Tool Live on the MFK 700. That ought to last a long time. But I'm just going to plug it in, check to see if it's off. I set this up earlier. And when you're using this, I start it right here. And I'm just going to bring it around like this. Look, that's already trimmed. And now I just, I'm just releasing that with the Vaxis. And I can trim all day long just like this. Have my stack of wood, and I just trim that super, super easy. And now I get the a side of a cabinet already done. Okay? And that's, that's one millimeter. Can I use it with PVC? Absolutely. But on the two millimeter and three, three millimeter, you might see a slight taper. So when you put a butt joint, if it's a cabinet side, you might see that taper. Okay? So there you go. Um, oh, here's one for you. Hey, we got somebody from Maine watching? All right. I know. I used to know somebody from there. Me? Okay. Come on over. I want to show you this. See this piece of wood right here? Okay. Now, would you do this with a handheld router? No. What do you use? A router table. Follow? Hopefully. Okay. Same thing with the Contoro. Look, I don't want to do this piece. I can't do this piece small. But what I can do is I can take it to a table and do it right here, okay, where I can mount the Contoro. Watch, I'll show you. I'm going to grab the Contoro. I'll unplug it here. And it's easy to set up. <laughs> what video did we do, guys, where we had a timer? It was really cool. Because a lot of people thinks, think... It's really tough to set up the Contoro in a table, and it's not. You just spin it out here like this, and you take, let's see if I can get this. Ooh, it cooled down pretty good. Look, I'm going to get the edge plate out. Ooh, I should do it on a flat surface. And what I want you to notice is right here. See this? See this, this part right here and this part right here? If I take that, watch. And I like to set up the table like this. I'm going to loosen it here. I'm going to loosen it here, and I'm going to lift it up. And I want you to notice these two brackets right here. See them? Yes. Cool? All right. I'm going to take my Contoro, and I'm going to put it in just like this. And I got to tell you what. You can go from portable, just like our CMS table. You can go from portable to semi-stationary in minutes, and it locks right in with these two green tabs, and I am ready to rock and roll. If this was warmed up, we could do that little edge banding. But here's where we're going to step out now, and I'll show you where this really shines. How about doing beveled goods? Okay? That's, that's very hard to do. If I take this, and there's a little scale here, but I can do 45s, 22 and a halfs, and I can run banding on it super easy and do it right at an angle on the bevel. Okay, so I wanted to show some basics today with the Contoro. There's so much more to learn. Um, but I wanted to go over because I wanted to show you the possibilities with it, whether beveled goods, semi-stationary, okay, to inside, uh, inside radiuses, okay, to outside radiuses, okay, inside corners, say you're doing some countertop or a lazy Susan shelf, okay, or cabinet, you can do inside corners. And yes, we'll do a Contoro advanced class. Um, don't know when, but we'll definitely do it. All right, so... Who has been, uh, hopefully this has been beneficial. Uh, let's see, no questions. 
Man, I'm loving this. Okay, yeah. so let's call out who's been online. We wow, Australia, woohoo! The on. Ukraine, Florida, Ohio, man, Malta, Malta. You guys are always there. South Dakota, Germany, Arkansas, Texas, Michigan, and my old home state, Maine. Awesome. I think that's it. I covered we're on vacation next week again. Hopefully, this has been really helpful. I want to thank you for watching. We want to thank you for watching. And that's the half hour. And we love you guys. So we'll have more Festool Live coming your way.